Hey everybody, welcome to Beyond 50 Skin, where we talk skincare fun facts and finds each week. Today we're going to be talking about Botox, and be sure to stay to the end of the video because I'm going to be touching on a medical aesthetic procedure that I didn't expect to discuss today. Good morning everyone, welcome to Beyond 50 Skin. My name is Cindy. Whether you're 15 or 50, it's never too early or too late to start a great skincare routine. So today we're going to talk about Botox. Botox was my entry level medical aesthetic procedure. I'd never had anything altered on my face before and the decision to do a medical aesthetic procedure is very personal. I would never um, judge someone for choosing or not choosing to do it. It's a very personal decision, a decision between you and your provider. Of course before choosing any medical aesthetic procedure you want to make sure you find a licensed provider in your area and make sure you set up a consultation with them beforehand so that you can discuss your goals for the procedure, what your expectations are, so they can help you manage any medical concerns you might have about your procedure. You may be taking medications that may they may ask you to stop approximately a week before your procedure. They may give you some preparatory instructions. Sometimes they will ask you to do some icing the night before to help um, prevent bruising the day of your procedure. So Dysport is only approved for the glabellar lines, the lines, the 11 lines in the middle between our brows. But Botox is approved for both the glabellar lines, the forehead lines, and the crow's feet. My very first experience was just very light, light injections in my forehead and my 11s, and it didn't really do a whole lot. I didn't see a big change. So I worked with my provider to find out what the right amount would be for me to get the effect that I want. So preparing for a Botox appointment is really important. The day before, you're going to get um, your ice packs ready in the freezer. You're going to want to make sure you change any medication schedule that your doctor or provider has asked you to change. You want to make sure you dig out your broad brim cat and your sunglasses. You're not going to be wearing sunscreen that day. You're just going to do a gentle cleanse. You also want to make sure that you've mentally prepared for your procedure. It could be a little stressful if you've never done anything like this before. And so you just want to do a little bit of de-stressing. I always know that if I work that into my routine, I, the outcome is always better. So preparing your skin for the day you get your Botox injection is really important. You want to make sure that you don't wear any moisturizers, no makeup, no products at all. You want to make sure that you rinse with a gentle cleanser, pat dry, and that's really about it. Don't usually wear sunscreen on the way home. I kind of give my skin a chance to breathe. So the preparation for Botox is very minimal as far as the date of your injection. You're not gonna wear your sunscreen, so don't forget your broad rimmed hat and your glasses. So all washed up and ready to go for my appointment. I'm a little nervous and I think it's important to be a little nervous. You need to make sure you know what you're getting into and go into it with all the information that you need to make a good decision for you personally. I've done that, but it's always a little nerve wracking. And I never tape during my um, medical aesthetic procedures because I really think it's important for the provider to focus on what they're doing and not worry about my vlogging or videoing. So I won't ever tape them. And I know it's really interesting to watch other people's videos and what the procedures you know they've had done, but it's just kind of my personal choice and preference not to do that. So I'll be coming back after my procedure procedure to kind of show you how the injections look and talk to you a little bit about how it went. Hey everyone, I just finished up with my Botox appointment. I feel a little bit like a pin cushion, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. And you might be asking like, what does it feel like to have Botox? Um, it really just feels like bee stings all over your forehead and where I had it placed. I did have a little bit placed along my um, crow's feet, which I was debating about, but I went ahead and did that. And also I put a teaser at the beginning of this because I had filler put in too. He put in a little bit at my temple area to kind of round this hollow area out. Now I didn't just jump into this filler not knowing anything about filler. I have had very tiny amounts of filler, the same type, which is called Rejuvederm Ultra. It's a hyaluronic acid filler, which can be reversed in case there's an issue. So I didn't just jump into it not knowing anything about filler, but he recommended having just a small placement of filler at the temples just to kind of round out the hollowing around my temple and also lessen the noticeability of these crow's feet. So I did end up having the Botox in my 11s above my forehead and two tiny little amounts put in my crow's feet along with a little bit of filler. And surprise, he also put some in my earlobe. 
how fantastic does that look? I had super creased up ears and now I don't. So like I said, I had a little bit more done than I expected and we will do another deep dive into filler in another video, but I wanted to let you know what was going on and tell you about um, getting the filler that I had done today. And I didn't do so much Botox. They always ask you whether you want movement or you don't want movement. So I always like a little movement. So I guess I get what's called baby Botox. It's kind of the popular term that they use these days. So I had Botox and filler, surprise. And another surprise is I had a small um, spot under my eye, which he removed. It was, um, they think it was a sebaceous gland that was full. I had been noticing it. It was a brown spot that I was kind of curious about, but he removed that for me while I was there. So it's always important to go to a board certified dermatologist so you can have all your medical needs met. And it's great to do it just in one visit. As you can see, I can still move my facial muscles today. And I want to talk a little bit about the do's and don'ts of aftercare. So again, we're not going to be drinking alcohol. I think I may have missed saying that in the pre-care. So you don't want to be drinking alcohol. You don't want to plan excessive exercise. No marathons after you get your Botox. You just want to kind of take it easy. You're going to stay upright for four hours. Facial massage, you want to avoid that. And also you don't want to schedule like hot tubs and saunas and hot showers, anything that's going to increase blood flow. You want to reduce uh, all of those activities or stop all those activities for at least 24 to 48 hours after you get your Botox. So the general idea is to decrease blood flow to your face and, and decrease pressure on your face. So you might want to think about altering your sleeping position and sleeping on your back. You wouldn't want to sleep on your face or your side where your face would get all squished up. So you can resume most of your normal activities. You're not going to have to have any downtime, as they say, but you also want to be careful of all the instructions that you were given about. No physical activity, no pr pressure on your face, sleep on your back if you can, stay upright for four hours, no major exercise that would increase blood flow to your face, no massaging, no alcohol that will also increase blood flow to your face. So just be really gentle after you get your Botox injection because you don't want that neurotoxin to spread to areas that it wasn't meant to be. Also, you wanna make sure that if you have any adverse uh, effects, after your Botox injection that you call your medical provider immediately or if it's life-threatening of course you always want to go to the hospital. They are very very rare but if you have difficulty swallowing, breathing, bladder function, something really unusual and out of the ordinary, your medical provider should be available 24-7 to talk to you after your Botox. But your doctor or prescriber will uh, go in detail with all the activities you need to do before and after you get your injections. So as you can see, aftercare is just as important as your pre-care. So my skincare routine today is going to be really stripped back. I'm just going to do a gentle cleanser, no pressure, and then I'm going to use my Arnica gel. Arnica gel is great for bruising. Lots of dermatologists recommend it to, to prevent bruising. And, it, you know, the randomized control trials that are out there are sort of mixed. It's a homeopathic remedy, but as my dermatologist said, it could help and it certainly can't hurt. But do remember to find a formula that doesn't have um, other additives in it. One I found that has had mentholatum in it, which is, you know, menthol would certainly not be something you want to put around the face area, especially around the eye. So I'm going to really strip back my skincare routine today. And also I want you to, um, to, I want to point out that this swelling around my eye has absolutely nothing to do if you're jumping in the middle of this video with my Botox injection. That was a small lesion that I had removed. So I want to take this time also to recommend that everybody schedule a dermatology check at least once a year just as a preventative measure, you know, skin cancer is on the rise and we're, we're getting better about our, wearing our sunscreen, but there, at least for folks my age, there were so many years where we probably weren't very good about our sun protection. So we want to make sure that we're keeping up on our yearly derm visits. I'm going to be doing my gentle cleanser, my arnica gel, and then a little bit of moisturizer. For me personally, it's just a very personal choice and your choice may be different and I highly respect that. But for me personally, I just feel like not being able to make those horrible frowny, frowny movements just makes me feel happier. I think that we should judge one way or another, whether someone decides to have a medical aesthetic procedure. You know, according to studies, when we feel like we look our best, we have more positive emotions, and I don't think that can be a bad thing. The Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology actually did a study on where they prevented 
frowning in people's faces and people's ne um, negative mood dropped. And if I can find that study, I was reading about it in an article. If I find that study, I'll link it down below. So I think it's really important. Um, Self-care is emotional care. And for me, this has always just been something that I've enjoyed doing over the last three or four years since I started it. I don't do it all the time, but I do it when I feel like my furrows are getting particularly deep. And you can see, like I still have facial movement this morning, but over the next few days, it will become less and less and less. And like I said, the duration of how long it will last is different for everybody. So how much did this cost me? It's usually, you know, between across the country, at least here in the US, it's like between $10 and $20 a unit about. So, um, and you'll need between about eight and 20 injections or little units around your face to do the forehead area. So it's gonna be around between 200 to $300, depending on your provider. And remember, this isn't permanent. So if you like the results and you wanna keep them up, you're gonna to have to go every, it varies with everybody. Um, every three to four months, I go every six months so I can get some return of my facial movements. That's just important to me. I don't like to have sort of a frozen face look and you can do different amounts of Botox. You can do the light baby Botox where you just get a little of the effect or you can do kind of the whole frozen face look. And I think an aesthetic is up to the individual person. And remember, the neurotoxins are also used for other medical procedures. You can use them for to have the sweat reduced from under your underarm or in other areas, excessive areas. It's called hyperchondrosis. So Botox can be used or botul botulinum toxins can be used to decrease sweating. They can help with overactive bladder. They can help with migraines for some people. Two other uses that I wasn't familiar with is you can have botulism to help with a lazy eye or if you have neck muscle spasms, which is called dystonia. So there's lots of uses besides facial, you know, freezing our face and preventing our wrinkles um, that people can use Botox for. So just as a last reminder, your preparatory care is just as important as your aftercare when you're considering a medical aesthetic procedure and finding someone who's board certified and licensed to do the procedure that you're interested in. So I'm off to do some icing for my eye, finish up my coffee and do a little paperwork. I hope you're having a great day too. Bye. So thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to subscribe and like and leave your comments below. I always enjoy chatting with you in the comments and I really appreciate your support of my channel and I'll see you next week. Bye.